Hey guys, welcome to the third video in the 3BSM build guide series. In this video, we've already got our 3BSM fully assembled, we've got the servos configured and installed, and now we're going to do final setup, testing, and operation of the 3BSM controller using the 3BSM config app. Out in front of me here, I've got the 3BSM assembly. I have an RC receiver and my RC transmitter. I have another receiver pack and I have a micro USB cable. The RC receiver, as you've noticed, uh, has a couple of male-to-male, -male, just servo-style leads attached to it. That's what I'm going to plug into the 3BSM controller for the transition actuator and the rudder actuator. And I've set up my channels on my RC transmitter so that rudder is on the rudder stick and transition is on this slider on the back. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my RC receiver plugged into the 3BSM controller. Uh, you'll notice there's a couple of rows of pins on the opposite side from the servo header here. Um, the one furthest from the micro USB port has a couple of labels on it. TR for transition and RU for rudder. So I'm going to plug my rudder, channel 4 in this case, into the bottom slot labeled RU uh, with the signal facing towards the center of the board. And then I'm going to plug the transition into the top, uh, again, with the signal facing towards the center of the board. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and get my 3BSM controller plugged in to my computer with this micro USB cable here. Um, for this initial setup, we're not going to have the servo power uh, connected. Uh, that way we can verify some settings and that our RC is working. Uh, before we give power to the servos and move anything. Um, it is important to note that uh, these pins here, these are just servo power pins. Uh, they don't connect to the receiver, they don't connect to the USB port, uh, and that lets us do things like uh, we can supply the servos with a higher voltage than 5 volts there uh, if we want things to run faster without affecting the RC gear or our connection to the computer. Uh, that being said, the USB connection is going to provide 5 volts to power the controller board and it's going to pass through to provide 5 volts to the receiver. Uh, so we don't have to worry about supplying separate power to the receiver in this case. Okay, I'll get this plugged in. Telemetry recovered. Now the 3BSM controller board ships with firmware on it. Um, and if there is uh, firmware updates available, the 3BSM configuration app will let you know at the time of connect. Um, that said, I'm going to go ahead and get the app open here. The first step is to choose our COM port. I happen to know that my 3BSM controller is on COM9, and then click connect. Alright, we'll see a notice that we're connected to the device up here, uh, and then we'll see some of the settings and the inputs come alive. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is talk through the general settings. Uh, you'll see we have the angle limit here, so that's the maximum deflection of the nozzle. Uh, so 90 degrees would be uh, vertical thrust uh, for you know straight vertical takeoff. Um, the maximum geometric limit of this 3BSM design is 105 degrees, so if you want to have a little bit of reverse thrust, you can bump that angle up. Next is the yaw limit. We have 10 degrees in either direction by default. Uh, the geometry here can support about 15 degrees or so, uh, so if you need a little bit more yaw authority, you can increase that as well. Next we have a couple of settings for homing. Uh, so homing is what the nozzle does when we first power it up. Um, it moves the servos very slowly towards the forward endpoints uh, and then senses the increased torque when the servos reach their end stops and then sets that as the starting position. So with the homing torque and the homing time settings here, uh, we can adjust the amount of torque that the servo applies to reach the home position uh, so that it doesn't um, encounter some extra resistance and then stop and thinks it's homed too early. Um, and then we can also adjust the time for how long the servos will allow themselves to search for home 
uh, before they give up and uh, assume that the process is complete. Uh, so typically 15 seconds is long enough for the servos to swing all the way from their uh, fully VTOL position, in a worst case scenario, all the way to the straight homed position, uh, unless you're running a really low voltage or something. And, and you can always adjust this number if you need to tweak that. Uh, lastly is the slew speed. So this, these are the amount of degrees per second uh, in thrust vector angle that the servos will achieve. Uh, so 15 degrees per second uh, would take uh, 6 seconds to go from fully straight to 90 degrees. Uh, this is pretty proportional to the servo voltage. Um, so 15 degrees per second works fine for uh, this little 4-cell, uh, just AA receiver pack that I'm using. Uh, now on my 3BSM uh, VTOL layout on my test bed, uh, I'm actually using 20 degrees here and I'm supplying the servos with 8.4 volts or 2S LiPo voltage. Uh, so that gives me a little bit faster transitions. It gives me more, uh, like, faster yaw response. Um, but keep in mind, you'll want to check the ratings of the servos and make sure that you're not applying uh, too much voltage. Uh, I've had good luck with the 8.4 volts, but uh, that's just me, and the default is lower. Um, now that we've got the settings out of the way, uh, we can move over here to inputs and calibration. Uh, so these sliders show the position of... Uh, the stick inputs that's coming from the RC transmitter. So you'll that notice that uh, if I move left and right yaw here, um, I get motion on that slider. And then if I move my transition slider that I've got set up on top here, I get motion on the other slider. Uh, this one's a little bit slower because I've set a uh, servo slow in my RC transmitter so that I can have nice smooth uh, angle transitions here. But keep in mind, the 3BSM controller will limit the speed. Uh, even if you put this on a toggle switch, it'll only slew the nozzle as fast as that slew speed setting allows. You can also go ahead and drag these sliders by hand. So you'll notice if I drag it and release it, I'll get a pop-up that the inputs are now manually adjustable. So we click OK there. And then we can move the nozzle around with just these sliders. Um, now, this, of course, if the servos were powered, would physically move in real life, uh, although they're not right now. So we just trust the little picture graphics here uh, that show where the nozzle would be. Uh, it'll ignore any RC commands that it's getting uh, in this adjustable mode uh, until we click Resume. And then everything goes back to the position it was uh, according to the RC stick inputs. You'll also notice that when we're in the fully fixed wing forward flight position, we don't have any yaw control. Um, and then that's normal because, of course, this would just be twisting back and forth. It wouldn't actually change the thrust axis at all. Uh, and then that yaw control kind of slowly starts to fade in uh, as soon as we have some vertical thrust vector angle going on. Uh, we've also got an enable setting here. Uh, if you uncheck this, now yaw is just completely disabled um, in applications where maybe you're not using the 3BSM for yaw, maybe you've got uh, veins or something, I don't know. But in this case, we do want to show it, so we're going to check that box, uh, and now we have yaw control again. All right, uh, now you'll see we have some buttons here for calibration. Um, set VTOL, set fixed wing on the transition side, and then left, center, and right for the yaw side. Um, that lets us choose our endpoints, or set our endpoints, rather, um, for uh, our RC6. So you'll see in this case, we've got 982 is the low on yaw, and we're not reversed here, so I'll go ahead and set that as the left position. You'll see we have set left yaw position up top. I'll release it until it's about centered. And then I'll click set center to set the center position. And then I'll go over to the right extent, click set right. And now our right position is saved. 
Of course, if you needed to reverse it, you could reverse it in your RC transmitter or you could just have the sticks um, in the opposite orientation when you click that left, center, and right. And then the 3BSM controller software would remap uh, those endpoints so that now your yaw is reversed. Uh, I'll actually do that as an example for the transition. Um, say I want this position here to actually be the VTOL instead of the fixed wing. I'll go ahead and click set VTOL. And you'll see our graphic here updated to VTOL. And then I'll go back to the other side. Click set fixed wing. And now that position is fixed wing. So now my slider direction is opposite of what it was before uh, in terms of transition angle. Okay, so that's about it for the setup. Uh, calibration is really the only thing that you need to do. Uh, the defaults for the angle limits and the homing torque and time and that sort of thing uh, should be pretty good for most situations. Uh, so we'll go ahead and disconnect from this tool here. Um, oh, and we've gotten a pop-up that says you've made changes without saving to EEPROM. Are you sure you want to disconnect? Um, of course, we don't because we want to save those changes we just made to EEPROM uh, so that they don't get wiped back to default the next time we turn on this controller. So let's click Save Settings. We'll get a little notice up top that the settings have saved to EEPROM, and then we can disconnect. If for whatever reason you ever wanted to revert to the factory settings, you could simply click the Restore Defaults for, uh, button down here, and that would restore everything to uh, just all of the defaults. Okay, here you'll notice that I've disconnected the 3BSM from the USB cable, and I've also moved it a little bit further from the straight configuration. Uh, that way the homing will be a little bit more pronounced and I can explain how that process works a little bit more clearly. Uh, the reason for disconnecting from the USB is um, the homing process uh, is the first thing that the 3BSM controller does when it boots. And since it was booted the whole time while we were configuring things in the app, um, as far as it knows, all the servos are already homed. Um, in fact, that's not the case. Uh, so if we were to supply power to the servos while the 3BSM controller was already powered up, uh, the, its reference position for straight would have been wrong and we would have run into the end stops. Uh, so what I want to do first is plug the receiver pack into uh, either of these two slots here. Um, it doesn't matter which you use, and it doesn't matter which orientation you have to plug in, because both of the center pins are positive, and both sets of outer pins are ground. Uh, I'll hold this up in the air here, and I'll plug in the USB cable. Uh, this is going to supply power to the 3BSM controller and the receiver, and then it's going to home the nozzle and return it to the forward flight position. Uh, once that happens, it's going to snap to the last position that we left it in the config app with the RC channels, which, if you look here, is about 44 degrees. Recovered. So here's the homing process. Now that everything is homed, it'll snap to the 44 degree position. Now all our controls are alive and we can connect to the tool again. And we'll see now we're getting updates for the position that are reflected by the actual position in real life. So we can start out in the full forward flight. We can bring the transition all the way to vertical and back. While we're in the full vertical position, of course, we can move the rudder stick left and right for yaw and return it to center. Now, since we've already fully calibrated everything before we plugged in the servos, we're pretty much good to go. Um, the only other thing left to demonstrate, I think, is setting this yaw angle limit, or sorry, transition angle limit to 105. Uh, we'll see that that has saved. And now when I move this slider all the way to the extent, 
We're now past 90 degrees here, and we still have yaw control, of course. Uh, so this is what you would do if you wanted reverse flight, which I've demonstrated in some of my videos with the F-35. And of course, you can still get to 90 degrees, it's just a different position on the slider, not quite at the end there. So that's it. The 3BSM is set up. We've installed the servos and the controller. Uh, we've done all of the configuration and we've connected it to our RC receiver. So this is ready to connect to a ducted fan and install on a model. Thanks for checking out this build series and thanks for your interest in the 3BSM and Lofted Aero products. Uh, now, of course, this is a development item. Um, it, you've seen me do many iterations of it here, and I wouldn't release it if I didn't think it was ready to go. But uh, there are certainly going to be updates, tweaks, uh, parameter changes, improvements to the app, uh, that sort of thing that happens as we move forward. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on this channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, uh, because if I do... Uh, updates and important things that you should keep in mind, I'll definitely be posting them here. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.